Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to The Codex. In this video, we're going to be continuing our GitHub series, learning all about forking in GitHub and what that means and how that's different from branches. Let's get started. So first thing first, guys, head over to your GitHub repository. Mine is right in front of me, the Kariman slash GitHub intro. And we can see over here that we've covered some good concepts of GitHub. We've understood how to create a repo, commit to the repo, create a branch and create a pull request for that repo. Now I want to go ahead and talk about this button over here that you see called fork. So what is a fork in GitHub? A fork is basically a copy of a repository. When you fork a repository, it allows you to basically have your own copy on your system and then modify that however you like and experiment with changes without actually affecting the original project. So it's kind of like a branch, except you're copying the entire project into a brand new repository. So the way this would work is, let's say I had um, an application um, for an iOS app that was on my GitHub repo. And someone saw the app and noticed that they could improve it somehow by changing the background color. So they fork my repository, they commit their own features to their repository, and then they create a pull request saying that, hey, I made this slight change to your repo, I improved the background color, I can review that and I can accept it. So forks are really useful to propose changes to someone else's project or to use someone else's project as a starting point. So let's go ahead and select this button right over here called fork. And you can see it's asking where should we fork this sort of project into. So I'm going to go ahead and fork this project into another one of my sort of groups. Theoretically, what you should be doing is searching the queryman slash GitHub intro and forking that project. I'm going to fork this into the codex group. And now what I can go ahead and do is after it happens and um, the query man slash GitHub intro is forked into the codex, I can now see this exact same copy of the repo in my the codex group. So what I want you guys to do is go to github.com slash the curry man slash GitHub intro. And once you see this page, guys, I want you to go ahead and click fork. So by doing that, you'll be able to fork this project in your very own repository. Once that's done, guys, let's go ahead and say that I want to add another item to my shopping list. So I, as a user who wants to improve the GitHub intro repository is like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and add a new feature. So let's go ahead and open up our shopping list.txt. And again, I'm in my second organization, the codex.me. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is edit this file and inside of this, make some changes. So let's go ahead and wait for this to load. It's taking a couple of seconds. And over here, let's just say that, okay, um, maybe radishes is not a good idea. Let's not get these anymore. And instead, let's go ahead and from the grocery store, let's get something simple like eggplants, okay? So what I've done is as an external user who does not actually have rights to edit this repository, I made a copy of this repo by forking it and I'm making my changes inside my own copy of that repository. So, okay, I deleted um, that last item. I added eggplants. I'm gonna go ahead and say, updated shopping list to make it better, okay? So I think that these changes have made the shopping list better and I wanna go ahead and commit these changes. So as you can see over here, it gives you two options, commit to master or create a new branch. Since we've already covered branches, I'm not gonna go ahead and create a new branch for now. Just go ahead and commit it directly to the master branch. So commit changes. So now what we've done guys is we've taken the GitHub intro project. We have cloned it into our own repository. We've edited and committed a new commit to this repository and added a new item. And now what we can do is we have, we can submit a pull request to the project owner. And as a project owner, if we like the changes made, we can pull these fixes into our original repository. So that is the basic gist of how a fork works. What I can go ahead and do now is click on pull requests. And over here, I can go ahead and head over to new pull request. And inside of this scenario, it automatically creates this pull request. Base repository is the curry man slash GitHub intro. Head repository is the codex dash me slash GitHub intro. And it's saying, do you want to try and create this pull request from my local copy to the original project owner's copy? So yes, I do want to do this. I want to create this pull request. I believe the changes that I've made to the shopping list should be taken by the original project owner. So go ahead and create pull request down below. And now what we've done is we've created this pull request that the owner will get a notification saying that, Hey, someone has taken your code, edited it, and now wants to update the original master code. Do you want to approve these changes? 
So now if I go to the curryman slash github intro and I refresh the page, let's get, take a look over here. Pull request is now one. So theoretically, guys, you didn't have to pull um, or fork my my project, the GitHub intro project. You could have forked whatever project you wanted, but understanding how this works is very important. So over here, I see this pull request number one, update a shopping list to make it better. Now, again, this repository is owned by me and I'm also making the change by me, so it is a bit confusing. But theoretically, the person making this pull request could be any person on the internet. Anyone who found my repository and wanted to make it better, who worked on it and was like, oh, I want to add this back to master, take a look at my changes. So if I click on this, I can actually see what changes they were able to make. If I go on commits, I can see what commits they have. And then if I go to files changed after this loads, I can actually see what changes did they make to the files. So if I click files changed, I can see that, oh, they removed radishes and added eggplants. Now I, as the owner of the original shopping list can be like, okay, do I like these changes? Do I want to take in these actions that some external user provided? Do I want to improve my repository as a whole? And personally, I don't like radishes. I love eggplants. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and accept these changes into my repository. So in order to do this, guys, I'm going to go back to my pull request. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on this pull request and scroll down and hit merge pull request. So confirm merge. And now what I've done is I've taken someone else's changes someone else's fork made their own changes and I'm applying those changes to my repository. So by doing this, I can go ahead and get anyone from around the world to improve my repositories. A lot of times you might've heard people throw on open source. Oh, my code is open source. Oh, that product is open source. What that basically means is anyone can see that code. Anyone can fork it. Anyone can add their own changes and make it better and then create these pull requests to make the original code even better. So I know what you're probably thinking, one lingering question, okay, Avi, you cloned this code, you made some changes, you pulled the request, what's the difference between a fork and a branch? So this is a great question, I'm going to answer this before I end the video. A fork allows you to keep the branches separated by user, okay? It does not allow you to add collaborators to the specific repository, external users have to fork this repository and make the pull request. In branching, however, all the work can be done in one project in one place. You add collaborators to your projects. These collaborators create branches. It's all in one single place. There's only one Git sort of repository to deal with. That's the main difference between branching and forking. Again, there's pros and cons, but in most cases, guys, when you're using forking, you'll be using it to either fork a project and add edits to it or fork a project and make it better. All other cases, for example, if it's a team and you guys are all working on a project, it makes a lot more sense to have collaborators onto your project and add them all and then start using GitHub just like that. Anyways, thanks so much for listening, guys. I hope forking and pull requests made a little bit more sense. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.